My creative setup is pretty insane, with a Shure SM7B, cameras connected to capture cards, stream decks, and more. And I don't even use it to stream. But even without streaming, I still use OBS Studio all the time for recording my videos. Here's why I do it, and if you have the setup to warrant it, why you should do it too. By recording using OBS instead of doing everything separately, there's a lot of things I can do in pre-production to save a ton of time in editing. From pre-syncing my audio all the way to color grading my webcams. I have a Shure SM7B. I spent $400 on my Shure SM7B. I'm gonna use my Shure SM7B to record my videos. But if I like recorded my camera and my Shure SM7B separately, I'd have two large files and then I'd have to do stuff like the clap test to sync them. It would be an extra, albeit quick and easy step, but it's a step that I've eliminated by just using OBS and pre-syncing my mic and my cameras. Similarly, I do my color grading in pre-production. Here's how my camera looks by default, and here's how it looks with a bit of color grading and a low intensity LUT. Doing this in pre-production also allows my cameras to match colors a lot better. Here's my back camera, here's my front camera, and the colors match pretty well. I'll use all the same color settings like white balance, contrast, saturation, etc. on my cameras, but because they use different lenses, this is a Sigma f1.4 16mm lens. This is a Tamron 11-20mm f2.8 lens. They're colors are slightly different even if I have the settings as same as possible. By color matching my cameras and applying color grading and LUTs before I even record, that's one moderately tedious step that I never need to do. And on top of that, the color grading I do only applies to the webcam camera sources, so if I'm doing like a screen capture, the color grading does not mess with the display. I still have the color grading on my face, but it's not applying to the display because it only applies to my camera source, not the scene in general. It's a small thing. Thing, but it's nice, just like how my lowest tier on Patreon, the baby pineapple, is $1 per month and very nice. I've literally just shown you an example, but this also really streamlines if I ever use display capture in a recording for a video. Oftentimes, if a YouTuber does display capture in a video where they have like their face superimposed over a screen, just like this, they need to record their screen, record their camera, record their mic, and do some type of visual indicator to make everything perfectly synced. It's tedious. It's not fun. I don't want to do a clap test and then like up, down, left, right, up, down, left, right with my mouse. It's a lot easier when I don't have to bother doing any syncing or setup to make my display capture things happen. Considering from my Ocarina reviews, I'll often show the web page of the Ocarina, being able to do this in OBS makes it so much faster. Other than the preparation of practicing the instrument and getting a good understanding of it, an Ocarina review typically only takes me about 20 to 30 minutes to record, if that. If I had to do everything separately, sync my display capture, my cameras, my audio all together, it would take me at least 35 to 45 minutes. Instead, I can go from camera to camera to camera on display in the matter of seconds. Because I've made my scenes in OBS, I never need to worry about syncing anything ever again. Hooray! And on the note of just switching scenes, I've already touched on this, but the last way this workflow makes me save so much time in editing is easy multicam capture. I have my front camera and my back camera both connected via capture cards that support 4K 30 or 4K 24 inputs. Thanks to these capture cards, I can use my cameras and OBS smoothly, no problem. I use my front webcam for the majority of most of my videos, pretty much all my longer talking head shots. And then I'll use the back camera for intros, outros, and some transitions or other emphasis points. Or otherwise just to switch up the scene a little bit. No, I'm not going to look at the camera. You're going to see the back of my head and you're going to like it. I really like having multiple camera angles in my production workflow. It's overkill. Most people don't need it, but I really like it. So before I develop this OBS workflow, in order to have proper sync between my mic, my display capture, and my two cameras, I would have to do full length video files in each camera, as well as my mic, as well as my screen capture. It was a hassle to edit. Not like super difficult, just really tedious and time consuming and resource intensive on Adobe Premiere Pro. Like the most tedious thing was syncing up my camera videos and then making a multi-cam camera video track in Adobe Premiere Pro and then manually switching which camera is being shown at any given time. That was like an extra 20 to 30 minutes in my editing workflow just to do that. On top of that, there was the extra tedium of like removing my SD cards, transferring my files. This is all very first world problems, but the point is by using OBS, I don't have to do any of that. I know when I want to use each camera because I will literally turn and talk to a different camera. Like, hello, it's me, I'm talking to this camera. Just kidding, I'm talking to this camera. So by using this OBS workflow, I literally save 30 to 60 minutes in editing per video when I want to use my multi-camera setup. And because I can use my multi-camera setup with no friction whatsoever, 
I'm always going to use my multi-camera setup. And just as impactful as all the time savings and editing, by using this workflow, I have such reduced file size, it's night and day. Through all this discussion on saving time editing, you might have noticed that I talk about a lot of separate files and the TDM it takes to edit those all together properly. Doing everything separately is a lot of files two cameras shooting at 4K, two 4K video files, one from each camera, my mic's uncompressed wave audio file, and sometimes screen capture. By recording all of these separately, I'd easily use 40 to 50 plus gigabytes for just a 30 minute recording session. By using OBS instead, and just switching scenes when necessary, a 30 minute recording session is closer to 12 to 20 gigabytes. That's still a large file, but it is less than half of what I was dealing with before. In addition, in OBS, I can pause my recording. So if I need to practice lines for my script, get some water, prepare something for my display capture, I can just pause the recording and not waste any file size. On top of that, all this reduction in file size does save me even more time in the long run because I don't need to process and offload my video files nearly as frequently. And I'm still getting full quality. I'm recording my videos in 4K at 60,000 kbps, so that's the equivalent of what I would shoot on my camera. I would do 4K at a 60,000 bit rate just the same. Instead, it's just OBS doing that. There is one drawback though, and that is lost fidelity. While the heaps of editing time and file size savings are amazing, you will lose a bit of fidelity in your editing by consolidating everything into one file. Maybe while I was talking to my main camera, it would have been more fun for me to use the back camera for a little bit. I don't know. If recording my short SM7B separately, a raw WAV file does have a lot more fidelity than a 320 kbps mp3 file. Maybe for my display capture, I didn't like the exact framing of my face over the display and wish I could have changed it in post. Recording everything independently does give you a lot more fidelity in editing. And in addition to that, OBS can be prone to occasional frame drops. This can make the video a little bit less smooth at moments. If I make sure OBS is the only resource intensive software I'm running, I basically never get frame drops, but it's still something worth considering. Even with the loss in fidelity and risk of frame drops, I still strongly prefer recording my videos using OBS instead of doing everything separately. Maybe one out of every 20 videos videos I make, I wish I had a little bit more fidelity. So 95% of the time, I would not even make use of the fidelity benefits that I'd get from recording everything separately. My videos look and sound to the viewer about 98% as good as they could. And I think that 2% drop in quality is worth the hours that I save in editing. And guess what? Even though I don't use this setup to stream, I still can stream if I want to. To stream using this setup, I just need to click start streaming in OBS instead of start recording. I lack the the consistency in my schedule to commit to streaming regularly, but it's really nice to know that I have the option. And it's no extra effort for me to set up because it's already in OBS. Remove your creative friction. This is why I use my weird OBS workflow. You might look at it with disgust over the slight loss in fidelity, but tell me, wouldn't you love to reduce the friction you have from having an idea to executing on it? This workflow allows me to eliminate just about all my friction between recording and editing. Whether you copy my workflow and record your videos in OBS or not, how can you reduce friction in your creative work? Are there ways you can get the same outcome in less time without sacrificing quality or enjoyment? Think about it and comment any ideas you may have for yourself, I would love to see. I have used this OBS workflow for well over a year now and it has served me really, really well. And I hope it can inspire you to find ways to improve your workflow. Thank you to my patrons, especially my $5 tier patron Joshua. You can support me for as little as $1 a month on patreon.com slash Andy Cormier. Also consider watching a more in-depth technical rundown on this OBS workflow. Otherwise, leave a like, subscribe for more, and I'll see you next time. Happy creating.